The main challenge facing trans men in the global HIV response is that we are invisible. Trans men have been left behind in global HIV response. People don't believe that trans men can have HIV and this has led to, a, uh, to not including us in a lot of HIV programming. A lack of data and research has led to inaccurate sexual health information and inappropriate service provision. To the Central Asian, trans masculine people came out to me that they are HIV positive and they find out that there's nothing about trans masculine and HIV. They were not part of HIV prevention programs. There is no access to information, uh, no access to resources, and decision-making has been too limited. The exclusion denies trans men the right to care and services. It dismisses the challenges that trans men are faced with on an everyday basis. Trans men are more likely to have experienced sexual violence. Particularly within gay male spaces, there's need for a discussion about how often this happens and the impact that it has on, on trans people and their safety in the community. We're not considered a risk. We're not considered vulnerable. We're not considered to be central enough to be included. Trans men are vulnerable to HIV and AIDS. It is time to start listening to the struggles and the realities of trans men, sexuality and risk that are involved. Support trans global or regional organization trans donor organizations and trans networks so they can provide then support to those national trans initiatives. Talk about what consent means when considering a, a wider variety of bodies, a wider variety of histories, and then to integrate that into how we talk about safe sex, safer sex, HIV prevention, uh, and access to resources. And by challenging this myth that people have about us, then probably we can make a difference. It's always better to speak up than to keep silent. In order to beat HIV and AIDS, include this minority group. They have stories to tell.